This will be the opening interface that you're going to see on Wax 2.0. We're going to navigate to the top of the toolbar to the project, and we're going to go ahead and add the uh, media files. And this will be selected on the top line. Basically, all our media that we're going to pick, videos, uh, images, whatever, we're going to go in this little area called the uh, media bin. We'll show you how to do that. Now this is a view of all the supported media files. Uh, your, your audio is going to be WAV files, your videos are going to be AVI, and your uh, image files just going to be virtually anything. So once you've selected your media files out of your save list, uh, it will be loaded right into the uh, media bin as it shows right on the uh, uh, file path there. And we are going to select just virtually any object. We, all we need is just some object image to work with. And so we selected Electric Vortex. Okay, so what you really want to do is just go ahead and select Electric Vortex and then just drag it and drop it right on the timeline. And as you can see, the, uh, uh, your image that you drag on the timeline is now listed right over there in uh, your, your first uh, uh, frame slot. And what you want to do is just go navigate to where it says Plug-in Presets, because what we're going to do today is just going to go use the uh, standard preset for text effects. Now this is the drop-down list that you're going to first see that's going to list all the different uh, stock presets that are available to you to do uh, all your image manipulation. Now we're going to select the stock text presets and just for the sake of having a lot of work to do today I'm going to select the camera over text and zoom. Now if you take your mouse and just uh, click right over onto that you can actually see a preview of that actual uh, image sequence. Well, just like adding uh, the media files onto the timeline, what we're going to do is just going to grab that uh, preset and drag it right over on top of the timeline onto uh, that particular sequence. Now, the uh, preset that we chose is going to be composed of three parts. It's going to be a text 3D, a transform 3D, and a texture generator, all of which we can individually manipulate as we go along. We'll show you how to do that. Now under uh, Text3D, we're going to start right off with text. That will allow us to go ahead and put all that information in there. We don't even have to worry about the image that we've already loaded onto it. And we're going to look first at the uh, sample title. This is your sample title editor. Uh, we're going to be able to input our text as well as choose our font and color. Now this is our drop-down list of all the fonts we have available. It's basically anything that you have on your computer that uh, take, is an actually a true type font. It will accept it. Okay, now uh, here's the image as it looks right now. As you can see, uh, it uh, is a font's correct, but uh, the uh, image is gone. Uh, now we can adjust the color here in just a few minutes. Okay, now here we're going to navigate to the extrude length. That way we can go ahead and start setting our 3D depth parameters that we're going to add into our uh, particular image that you can see right over here. This is without any extrude at all. So you're right. At, the, at this point it looks uh, really bad, so we're going to fix this up. <laughs> What we're going to do is go and change that extrude value from 0 to uh, 0 0.2. Small increments are there. As you can see, this is uh, now giving our uh, little flat object at least some depth now. Now we can uh, just go ahead and adjust our bevel size, which is down on the list. Okay, now let's go ahead and get rid of that blue color. We'll do that by going to the front material and use media, and we're going to select our color. When we open it up, we can choose color and then uh, pick just like we usually can on a regular palette. Now this is what our front face looks like now on our front face material. And for the extruded area, we're going to get to the side materials here in just a minute. And we're going to do this just the same way on the side materials as we did on the front materials. Basically, we're going to choose our color from the color palette and uh, then uh, see what it looks like on our ultimate image. Now this is what the image looks like with our side material change. I uh, chose a green. I know it's a little odd, but it, uh, it gave it a little flashy glow to it. Now the bevel material will be that area directly around the uh, front edge. We're going to change that to a, a little darker red. Well, this is what it looks like. Uh, I know it uh, is not necessary, but uh, the advantage is that it does give you a little bit of highlighting around uh, and a contrast between the uh, front edge and the uh, side material. Okay, now this is where it gets fun. Now, we're going to move into Transform 3D now. This we're going to be dealing with position, scale, angle, and pivot. Now, position X is uh, very straightforward. That uh, shifts your uh, text image either left or right uh, in a horizontal plane. And position Y just changes its position uh, in the uh, vertical or uh, central plane. And position Z is your basic uh, zoom uh, uh, position in uh, three-dimensional space. Now scale X is your uh, basic uh, stretch effect in the uh, horizontal plane, as you can see in the top image. 
and scale Y uh, basically stretches it in the uh, vertical plane as you can see in the top image. Now on uh, scales in the Z plane, uh, you really need to rotate your image a little bit so that you can see how much you're extruding it when you do scale it. Well now that we've got our position and uh, scale the way we want it, we can now move into changing the angle as we go along. Now uh, the angles are a little bit odd. As you can see, it looks like it's rotating uh, in a wrong direction instead of X, it looks like it's Y. Now it says it's actually rotating around the X axis in three dimensional space. That's why it's the angle X. And as before, and uh, in your kind of a three dimensional space, you have to think in mind this of angling around the uh, Y axis. Now because the Z axis is a three dimensional plane going forward and back into depth, uh, you can see it rotating around, the, changing the angle around the Z axis. Now again, just like uh, the last two examples, you really have to imagine these in three dimensional space, things changing around an axis. For example, this is a change in the pivot point around the position Y. And uh, looking at the uh, top image here, you can see that there's a change uh, around the uh, pivot point in the Z axis. Okay, now that we uh, have finished with Text 3D, Transform 3D, we're going now to the Texture Generator. You see we're going to deal with persistence, octaves, and variety of parameters that are going to be related to that extruded part in three-dimensional space. And now here we've set the persistence all the way down to zero. As you can see the top image, uh, all the shininess of our extruded uh, partition uh, has completely disappeared. Now here we made a seemingly minor change by changing the persistence from 0 to 0 0.1, but if you look at the top image you see it makes a very astounding difference. Now here we're going to change the value in the octaves. It's basically going to affect a lot of the uh, shadow effects that some of the other parameters are going to do as well. Now here we've uh, gone ahead and changed the uh, zoom texture uh, to a large value so it stretches all the way across in uh, three dimensional space. Now here we've uh, changed the texture generator in the offset X so that it uh, uh, completely obliterates any kind of shadow effect uh, at all in uh, the X axis. And here I've uh, basically done the same thing uh, in the uh, Y axis. Okay, looking at the uh, color levels in the uh, texture generator, these are going to affect just a little bit on your, on your side material that you put in earlier. Uh, your basic color is going to change. You're just going to be changing some of the texturing. As in uh, most editing along the uh, timeline, if you don't like what you're seeing on the uh, final uh, output, you can always use the keyframe animator by uh, uh, clicking on that little button that's uh, located on every one of those little sections. And you can stretch out the timeline on the bottom bar. Okay, now that we've uh, run the play and we previewed everything, we like everything we like, uh, now let's go ahead and let's try to render this. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the very top toolbar and under the project menu, we'll be able to uh, choose the output mode, uh, put the file name, uh, uh, all our parameters, uh, how you want to output it uh, to your final rendering. Now when you get to the save as, uh, as you know, uh, when we input the initial video material, it has to be AVI. Well here as you can see, your output, well actually you can uh, save it as uh, MPEG-1, uh, SWIFT, or, uh, or your standard AVI file. Okay now, with all your settings ready to go, you're ready to go ahead and render, just go back up to the project menu, and drop down menu, just uh, click on render and you're ready to go. Okay, well, it, it may take a little while, but actually it's, it's reasonably quick. And there's our banner.